Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. I'm on a mission to inspire and support you in reaching your goals in life and business. Do you want to know the secrets to growing a profitable DJ business? Tune in to hear real life stories from DJs across the globe who have grown successful DJ businesses. DJ Rundat. Today I have Alton Olson from Soundfire DJs, also known as You Tell Me, You Tell Me. <laughs> DJ Ultimate. <laughs> Ultimate. There we go. That's a, that's a clever one. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being in the in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be here. Yay. So how did you get started DJing? Oh boy. Well, um, to make it a shorter story, uh, I kind of got started. I was in the army band. I've been a musician all my life. And when I was in the army band, uh, every once in a while, like when I was on active duty army band, not when I was in the part-time or the guard, because when you're in the guard, if you're activated, it's because they want the band. But in full time, sometimes they want a sound system with pre-recorded music, which is what a DJ does. And somehow I got picked one day to do it because I had a large library. And then I was picked after that all the time and that's sort of where i got the itch to start doing it and then after i got out of the military um we i met up with another individual i ended up going back to school he was another non-traditional student and then we ended up starting to perform more karaoke shows if you will in bars and stuff around the area so that's really where it got started and then kind of kept growing and going from there mm. That's really cool. You know, I didn't even know that there's an army band. Is that still a thing? Yes. Yes, it is still a thing. Here's the crazy thing. The unit that I was with actually got deactivated just a couple years ago. Uh, however, the members from that unit then were transitioned to some other units and such. But yes, army bands and military bands in general are still a very big thing because they're a very important tradition and heritage of a United States military. If, uh, if you know your history, a lot, of the, um, a lot of the commands that were given to our armies, especially during the founding of our country, were from band members such as trumpet and drums. That's how they communicated the commands of the commander to the soldiers by different calls and musical calls. Wow, very cool. Very cool. So you started out just they put you on the job and then karaoke and then it just turned into more and more DJing, huh? That's right. Yeah. So you've been in it for a while. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've been DJing in total for 14 years now. Nice. Nice. So uh, what have you been doing lately? <laughs> that magic question <laughs> like we're gonna go from like all of this growth and greatness to hitting the worst year any of us have ever seen i mean here's the thing we're still so i live in wisconsin and wisconsin has probably been one of the i don't want to say better states because what is that but i will say less restrictive states because of the fact that when these lockdowns and restrictions were happening, um, the there were representatives in our state who then took these lockdowns and the way they were introduced and took them to the Supreme Court of the state and fought them. And then the Supreme Court didn't say that the lockdown itself was illegal, but the way it was implemented was illegal. So we really haven't had uh, any real lockdowns, except for the first one that happened back in March and April. And since then, there have been guidelines and, and things said that, hey, you know, reduce your numbers, all the things that we all know. And there are still people who are rightfully so respectful and fearful of this virus and what it can potentially do. And, uh, but then you still have people who say, hey, I still want my life to move forward. So we're, we've still been doing some events. We still had a, a decent amount of events in 2020. Uh, however, it was nuts because I didn't even do an event the whole uh, from from February to August, which is which is a long time, you know. <laughs> 
I'm counting. So, That's seven months. <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, six months. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was because my last event, I, and I, this is not your incorrect math. This is me not being specific enough. My last event was on the last day of February. This last year was on February 29th. So technically then if you want to, if you want to get technical March <laughs> through August, but um, yeah. So, I mean, during this year, one of the things I did is I started doing as a lot of DJs started doing, I, I started doing more live streams and the live streams weren't so much. Uh, I mean, at first I thought, well, let's see if we can do this and see if we can get kind of some kind of traction with it. But the other reason for it was I wanted to have something that uh, gave me an outlet to perform. And also that when events did return, it wasn't like I hadn't performed in all this time and you know, you're rusty, you're rusty rust kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I kind of joke about like being um, out of shape, like DJ out of shape. <laughs> I know a few of us had our first weddings in September and like, like had some neck trouble after getting the speakers up on the stands and I had gotten a, a new fresh set of QSCs and they were heavier and I got the hydraulic lift uh, speaker stands and I was like, how, how, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> help. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you get used to slinging gear every week that's almost like a that's like a, a weightlifting workout really is what it is you know it's like resistance training Absolutely. um but yeah you let that go for a while and you're like oh gosh i don't have to sling gear for a while you think yay and then you get back to being ah oh. <laughs> yes yeah yeah the live streaming has been such an interesting experience i don't think it's gonna go away i personally am uh, still trying to dial it all in to like a nice system for me. Um, and for me, just my biggest challenge would be uh, the internet where I live. I have the fastest and it's just barely fast enough, you know, but it's been really cool to collaborate with other DJs from around the world. We've had some fun little parties, um, virtual parties, and I even threw my own virtual birthday party, you know? So like, there's definitely a lot of room to be creative right now as DJs. Um, you know, nothing breaks my heart more than seeing DJs wanting to quit. <laughs> um, I mean, at the same time, you know, I mean, if you were to make a pivot, now's the time to do it. True. You no, know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, say as to another DJ who says, "Hey, you know, I think I, sh I think I need to move into something else." I'm not gonna say for a second that. Uh, Oh, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't give it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, it's it sucks to see you have to give up DJing, but I mean if, if DJing is a is a livelihood for you and you can't make your livelihood now, yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I always believed in having multiple streams of income and um yeah, I'm a multi-passionate person. I started in a, with clothing, so so you know, yeah, for whatever you gotta do, but I hope that those that do decide to kind of call it quits right now that they come back around, you know, it's, it's for, for me, it's like, it's what really lights me up. <laughs> yeah. If it's a passion, by all means, by all means. Yeah. Okay. And I don't think anything can take that away from you if it's a true passion. Yeah. You know, really. if it's not a true passion, then yes. Yeah. Then yeah, exactly. I mean, it really is about, you know, following your heart and your passion and what brings you the joy, because that's when I, I had the turning point in my DJ business where it had been, it had been not so much a business in the beginning. And I had my clothing line still in a store. And then I hit a point where I was reaching this burnout because I had, you know, too many irons in the fire and I had to put the clothing on, on the back burner and just put it aside and make that big decision. And that's what I had been doing and been my, my money maker for, for a long time. And uh, then as soon as I made that decision and really went all in with the, with the DJing and I wrote my book and started like meeting DJs from around the world, I was like, there's a whole big world out there. I didn't even know about <laughs> It's funny because yeah, there, I probably would have never known like all the stuff that's in this DJ stuff if you had. And that's probably true about a lot of different, you know, especially niche professions that 
once you get into the world, you, you see how much there really is. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So when, um, when you were first starting out, did you have any particular mentors or how, how did you really learn? Well, when I was very first starting out, um, not so much. When I started going more full time, so the story of, of taking DJing from something that was more of a part-time hobby to full-time, really, I have my son to thank for that. So when I got out of the military, like I had mentioned, I went back to school and uh, I actually worked for a year in the corporate world. And then I decided to go back to school and finish, finish my degree because I had actually started college before I went active duty or even joined the military. And then, uh, but then dropped out to go full time military. And after I got out of the military, I worked for that year corporate, and then went back to school and uh, switched majors too. So I ended up finishing school in three years because uh, I did summer school classes as well. But then um, when I graduated school, three major life events happened at once. I graduated college, my wife and I bought our first house, and we had our son. Wow. all within a three month time span. And uh, we, while my wife was on maternity leave, I was, well, and even before that, uh, I was looking for jobs that were part of my uh, degree of specialty. And in the area that I live, unfortunately, there aren't as many opportunities for that, unless you want to work in like a third shift environment, you know, getting your foot in the door, which with a new baby at home and everything else happened, like I, I, that can't happen. The other thing too, is my wife and I, we wanted to be there with our child. You know, we, we didn't want, even, there's nothing wrong with daycare. We just had made that choice that we didn't want to put our child in daycare. That it was just something that we wanted to do. We wanted to be there with our child and have that bond with them. And so finally, uh, I went back, well, I went back to working part-time in retail for a little while. And while I was doing that, <clears throat> I looked at what was in my life and I looked at the DJ thing and I said, you know, there are other people who are able to do this DJ thing full-time. Why can't I? And so then I made the decision to dive headfirst in this, uh, started getting things going, quit the retail job literally walked in and quit on the spot. Probably something I shouldn't have done, but <laughs> <laughs> walked in and said, I quit. <laughs> and uh, what was it? Um, then uh, like just worked, I, I worked my butt off. Like I was, I was doing it constantly, but the great thing about it is I was able to be there with my son and also do this, set my own schedule, my own hours when, he needed me or my wife needed me I could be there for them and that's really what that was really the the um the impetus to me moving into this and, and getting going as a full-time DJ yeah I think as a parent it's like been really a a great job <laughs> to be able to uh yeah do our own schedules and spend mm -hmm. that time with our families and if we want to choose to have time off we can you know mark that off on the calendar and um yeah, and, and I think it's a, setting a good example, too, of, of for our children of, like, you can do whatever you really want to do <laughs> to make it work for you. you know? The only problem is that is that if you love this job, which I do, you don't really take time off from it. And my, <laughs> my wife was like, when are you going to take some time off that we can take a vacation? Mm, yeah, <laughs> balance of some sort. <laughs> yep. My goal is um, more traveling gigs where I can bring the family and I have gotten to do a few I, I've gotten to go I live in Northern California I got to fly the kids down to Southern California and do a 40th high school reunion and then this summer um, I had a wedding uh, that was supposed to be in my neighborhood and they shut down the venue so I drove to Oregon I drove the Oregon coast and uh, did the wedding up there and it was it was awesome so you know okay challenging stressful at times to travel and work with kids and I definitely have brought my kids to plenty of events um 
community events where I was working and it has its challenges but for the most part my kids love it and they're like can't wait they're like I hope we have festivals again I, I want more concerts and they're eight and 14. <laughs> that's awesome yeah yeah so tell me a little bit about Midwest DJs Live I read in your bio that you were on the board of directors for that and it's an event that I I don't really know much about so I, want, I would like to learn more sure so yeah, I was on the board of directors for Midwest DJs Live. I, it was 2017, 2018, and 2019 for those for those shows. And Midwest DJs Live is a it's a educational conference that takes place in Milwaukee in the Midwest. Uh, you know, when you usually think of DJ conference and stuff, they usually happen either on the West Coast or the East Coast. It's like Atlantic City or Las Vegas, typically speaking. And the idea behind Midwest DJs Live was it started out originally as a meetup between a bunch of DJs that were local to Milwaukee, and it kind of just kept growing from there. I started my first Midwest DJs Live that I attended was the Midwest DJs Live Six. It was that was the first one, and really, in a sense, I can kind of credit Midwest DJs Live as a whole for kind of being a mentor to to getting me going full time. It was, it was going to that, um, going to, it was the very last Las, v, Las Vegas DJ show was the first Vegas one I went to and then Mobile Beat. Uh, I mean, really all the people that I've met there and experience and connections and, and education that I've gotten from those different things really helped me a lot with, with uh, developing as a full-time professional DJ. Uh, but getting back to Midwest DJs Live, Midwest DJs Live evolved a lot uh, in the years that I was attending, as well as the years that I was on the board. You know, we went from meeting in a uh, like we were at a we were at a was it a bowling alley or something like that in Racine, the first <laughs> one I was at, and then before I joined the board, they had moved to uh, this smaller conference room at a at a hotel near the airport in Milwaukee. Uh, by the time I had left the board, you know, we were already at a, uh, a casino, like a, a big casino hotel resort in the Milwaukee area and with production that's on par with what we've seen at the bigger, bigger DJ shows, education that's on par or some critics, I'm not saying this myself, but some critics have said it's better than what they've seen at some of the other DJ shows. So, but Again, the thing that I think that's great about Midwest DJs Live is uh, the content and education uh, has done a really great job. Uh, their their director of education did a good, very good job um, with uh, with all the stuff that he did to try to put together that education. Uh, my job was I was on I was the VP of public relations, so I did a lot of the marketing. I was interviewing the different uh, speakers that we we're having come on and doing a lot of the public facing things that you would see with the organization while I was on it. And I was also the stage DJ. So, Ooh. which I was very honored to do, uh, being a DJ that could DJ for other DJs. Yeah, that's amazing. That sounds rad, all of that. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Cool, that's very cool. Yeah, I was uh, set to speak at Mobile Beat this year and I've never been to a DJ convention. So I didn't really even know they existed. Like I teased that, I was in this reggae bubble in Northern California for years, just doing things my way and didn't really know about this big world of DJs. What were you going to speak on at Mobile Beat, if I may ask? It was, um, I'm, I'm like, let me think. It was from going from hobby to a business, how I, how I grew my business. I think that's what it was about. God, I should revisit that presentation. I, I got to speak uh, recently for uh, DJ and DJ and News TV. I don't know why I have a hard time saying that. Disc Jockey News TV. <laughs> yeah, no, DJ and TV, John Young. Yeah. <laughs> that's a tongue twister for me. Yeah, just basically it was a lot about my story on how I grew it into a real into a real business. You know, I wrote my book, How to Start a DJ Business, and and um, yeah, I was just sharing my story and my experience and my tips and. Um, yeah, it was, I was uh, really 
nervous about it. Actually, I had been meditating on it, visualizing me on stage being calm and like leaving the stage being just feeling great. <laughs> like, And then it went virtual. So I did get to be a part of it virtually. Um, I definitely am excited to one day go to a real live convention and experience that because from the DJs I've talked to, uh, it seems pretty life changing and, and really amazing. So I'll tell you what, like the first one you go to, it's, it's motivating. I'd say the biggest thing. So when you go to, when you go to, um, you do pick up, you know, what we'll call like gold nuggets here and there. Um, some of the stuff there, when, after you've been to a few of them, you'll start to see that some of the things are the same that you're, as far as the education topics and what people talk about, but you still pick up something new that you hadn't maybe thought of a certain way before. But the biggest takeaway, I think, after you go to them repeatedly is you kind of get re-energized from it. Or I shouldn't say kind of, you do get re-energized from it. You go home and you're like, yeah, I, you know, you, you, you have a bunch of ideas. You've got a, a lot of great things to work on. You've seen how they work for other people. You get motivated. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping this this will do the speaker series, you know, like I, I just want to inspire and motivate people and learn, you know, I learned so much from interviewing people. I, I'm getting a lot out of it, too. You know, <laughs> I always get to pick your brain a little. Or <laughs> um, awesome. So what's happening now for you? Do you have any anything exciting going on? Or are you just just keeping it keeping it in, in flow? With <laughs> well, I in the last couple months here, I, I really just decided to focus more on taking advantage of the time with my family. So I had a lot of events that still happened. Uh, it was interesting. August, we had an event. We had my, both my teams, we had one event in August. <laughs> 2020, y'all. Uh, but then September and October, we had almost our full schedule. We, only, we had a few weddings that did cancel and, and events. But we also had people that had moved their events to the fall that still, they said, you know what, we don't want to move these, we want to do it. So we had still had a, quite a few that happened in that time. And then, uh, and then we had, a, uh, and then we had, a, you know, a break in November and December. So I really just was trying to take the time to just enjoy it with my family. So I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but I think that's really important. And I, it was something that my, I, I've too have talked on DJ and TV as well with John and stuff like that. My last segment that I had submitted was one about mental health and taking care of yourself. And if you need to, if you need to reach out to people, do it, you know, reach out to me if you want. I mean, if you think I can be helpful, um, it's really an important thing. And I think especially during a time where it's more stressful, you know, don't look at it obviously it's stressful because of financial situation that it, it involves. It's stressful because you're wondering, okay, when are things going to pick back up? Is 2021 going to be a repeat of 2020? Am I going to be facing these problems again for another year? All these are questions that everybody has on their minds and rightfully so, but also make sure to, you take advantage of the things that this does allow you. Don't be so over consumed in some of the, the issues don't that now that's not to say ignore the issues but it's to say put so time aside for them but also put time aside to take advantage of things you couldn't do before when you were busier yeah yeah absolutely i mean mental health is so important i mean health in general all of it connects and um, yeah, time with our family, time with our friends, connecting deeper with people, deeper relationships, um, you know, reaching out to people, saying, hey, just thinking of you, are you all right? Like, just random check-ins and all those things, and I, I, I feel it. I feel it a lot. Like, so much, if I'm not, if I'm not feeling right, like, everything's messed up, <laughs> so, you know, and, and what I really have learned a lot um, this year was, like, what is not in our control we gotta kind of let go of that and Absolutely. focus on what we can what can we do what can you do what can you do right now like it's it's like as much as i love visioning into the future um it's also important to remember to be here now in those times when you're finding your your brain racing and 
what's going to happen, you know, what's going to happen and watching the news. I, d I don't do that, but like, I know a lot of people that do and it creates a lot of anxiety in their minds and like, yeah, I mean, more than ever, we need that support and community. And I love, I love um, growing my own <laughs> in the DJ world. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? I mean, as far as things that are going on right now, um, let's see here. So we obviously were getting into a, what is traditionally known as our booking season. You know, a lot of people get engaged and our primary focus is weddings. Uh, so we have, we have a wedding show coming up in late February, which we just got emails. It's still going to be on, but you know, we'll see what happens <laughs> in the next month, month and a half or so. And, uh, but I mean, we're excited because we're going to be doing some new things for that. We're actually getting a bigger space for it. Uh, we're, we're w working on some other things too. We have been able to provide virtual services to clients. So we definitely have pivoted their uh, offering more uh, streaming. For example, we, tr for, we, we offer onsite streaming uh, of different things. We did lots of streaming ceremonies this year. So lots of things in that respect. And I think what we're gonna see coming up this year as far as, as things goes, I think we'll probably see more of that. I think a lot of that stuff is, is gonna be around now with, uh, with the fact that you may have people that don't want to travel because they don't want to take the risk that way. So I definitely, I'm definitely excited about some of the new technologies that we've been able to add to what we can do with, with the streamings and uh, with the live events and the live videos. So there's definitely a lot to learn there, of course, because it's almost like you're running your own TV studio, uh, but, but then there's also a lot of opportunity as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's going away. I think I think it's great because um, we're connecting virtually more and more connections good. I mean, in person spectacular. You can't beat that. But <laughs> yes, no, one hundred percent. But you know, this this will do <laughs> for now. And yeah, that's really smart. Yeah, everyone's gonna need that. And and it's cool. You get you reach a bigger audience. Well, you can. You can. <laughs> Yeah, well, like also like say it for, for a wedding that's on a budget and they can only invite a hundred people. Well, now they can invite like 500 people or, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's something that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing, the streaming thing. I, I mean, being totally, totally honest here, I've done some live streams, uh, like for example, on Twitch where I had almost nobody, like maybe one person tune in the whole time. You know what I mean? Uh, it can happen especially if you haven't built up an audience on a certain platform. Uh, now with live streaming and weddings, you know, the nice thing about that is that they can send an email out to all the people they've invited with a link to join in. And that, you know, you get a lot of people that are going to come into those and they've been very successful. Um, but, you know, like kind of getting back to the whole live streaming thing, if you want to live stream as a performer to get out there and perform, uh, one of the things I can't stress enough because I've dealt with this myself is, don't do it thinking that you're, don't do it for thinking you're going to get a lot of people watching. Uh, do it for you so that you have an outlet to perform on and you're putting something out there to the world, whether the world looks at it or not. Uh, it can be, it can be very, what's the word I'm looking for? It can, you, you can get really down on yourself if you worry about how many people are necessarily tuning into you. Don't worry so much about that. The people will come just keep going and doing it um but uh yeah as far as getting back to that stream thing that really was an adventure in a sense because as a lot of djs discovered you know most of our audiences are on facebook and mediums like that but those mediums are not for us because they don't want to help at all with the with the um with the playing of copyrighted music over their platforms if anything they want to just shut it down and that's why I think Mixcloud is amazing. Um, Twitch is the best streaming platform out there, hands down. But if you don't have an audience on Twitch, uh, um, it takes a while to get one. It can be done, but it takes a while. And you have to get, you just have to keep at it. You got to spend time on the platform interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot to it. Yeah, absolutely. There is plenty to learn with Twitch. <laughs>
<laughs> DJs will never be bored. <laughs> right. There's like, there's like, I learned through uh, Spotify doing their like 2020 year in review kind of for your stats for your Spotify. It said something like I had listened to over 400 genres and I had discovered like 167 new genres or something, you know, some crazy stats. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, what's funny to me is with um, Spotify, I, I've used it more for uh, like uh, uh, stuff to listen to while you sleep, you oh, know, yeah. that's, that's what I use it for. And it's funny because when I look at, I looked at my year in review, it was all these recordings that were played by when I sleep, like these are your most listened to, and this was your most listened to track. And I'm like, what track is this even? And it's a part of a playlist of stuff I listen to. <laughs> I love that. I know my number like six or seven was this meditation. <laughs> it's about like releasing things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the first five songs, you're just like bumping your favorite five songs. And then there's the meditation comes in. <laughs> yeah, like this is the first thing I've got. It's something I can't even pronounce. It's it's TRP and E with a little U, that, like the little thing over it. L I V O S T, and then I can say Rose, pronounce I, I don't even know. And then the <laughs> next one says, it says it's got two Chinese symbols. And then after it, I think this is the translation dream to be a butterfly. Like, <laughs> that's, 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 that's my second top most listened to. I'm trying to see how far down I have to go before I see something that I actually <laughs> listen to like during the day for fun. And it, wow, I'm still scrolling. And <laughs> it's, it's yeah, great. well, that's a, that's another thing I um, just want to touch on as far as like the mental health and, you know, keeping your mood and when you're feeling down or you need that little boost of inspiration. Like I have my little arsenal of, of basically meditations, pep talks that can really, you know, give you some motivation if you need like a two minute or five minute, like Spotify has great lists, um, all, probably all the apps, you know, but uh, it's good to have a little, little something to boost you <laughs> when you need Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Meditation has been so helpful especially, especially now. And here's the thing, you have time to do it right now. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you ever had time to do it, it's now. Uh, and one thing I can't recommend enough is actually, like I, like I said, I, I listen to these, I play these when I sleep because they've got, you know, either soothing sounds or they maybe have uh, like some, some positive affirmations, you know, things that help keep you positive and in a good mental state your day so you can be as effective as possible but um when i'm meditating i i started with guided meditations and now i meditate just in total silence awesome. and i can't recommend that enough mm -hmm. it gets to the point where your not your focus is nothing but just getting your mind to be still and that sounds easy but it's not <laughs> it's really hard no. to get the mind just to stop and stop thinking and just be still but i'll tell you what it and it might take like 15 minutes um once you start getting good at it yeah you know to get to that point in the meditation yeah. but you do it and it's worth it because it not it, it, it makes you feel i feel like it makes you feel more refreshed than a good sleep mm, yeah yeah it's really cool so the 528 hertz is the one of the lists that we like to listen to at bedtime, me and my son, and he'll tell me, put the, put the meditation on the one without words. <laughs> <laughs> or he'll say, put Gary Vee on crush it. Or we listen oh, to God. Robert Kiyosaki money books. Like it depends kind of on our mood at bedtime. But <laughs> yeah. There's the, there's the Gilbert Gottfried meditation too. If you ever want to try that one, just saying. I'll check it out. <laughs> Sounds good. You get, we'll you get Iago, the Iago, the parrot. Telling oh, you gosh. <laughs> there's also ones on youtube that are like fuck it fuck it all like <laughs> so funny that's that's the gilbert gottfried oh really oh yeah <laughs> that's so funny yeah there's meditations for everybody if you haven't started meditating give it a try it works <laughs> wonders i like to do some guided ones about visioning visioning into what you want and what it feels like and experiencing what it feels like already and that's what i was doing before mobile beat was i was just trying to visualize it and experience it as a positive fun thing not scary i'm shaking like all that you know I'm stumbling mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. so yeah really just visioning 
what, the way you want things to be. I keep visioning everybody healthy, back to gigging, <laughs> feeling good. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, for being on the show in the mix and how can we stay connected to you and best support you? Oh, wow. Thanks for, uh, I wasn't even expecting this question, but yeah, you can find me. Uh, what I'd really love, I mean, if you're a DJ and you're on Mixcloud, hit me with a follow at mixcloud.com slash soundfiredj. On there, I've got a ton of mixes to, that can be listened to. I do have an exclusive section as well. It's only four bucks a month. Uh, much appreciated if you do subscribe. If you don't, I understand too. It's totally cool. Uh, but yeah, hit me with a follow. Check out some of the mixes there. Also, my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash soundfiredj would be great. And really, those are the two things that I'd love to see people. Otherwise, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm also on twitter.com slash soundfiredj as well. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure connecting with you and thanks for sharing all your knowledge. And um, I look forward to staying connected and thank you everybody for tuning in. Thanks, DJ Rondette. Thank you.